welcome to bblf everyone we had a very interesting discussion in the previous session and somehow i could relate um, you know what we are going to talk about now in a loose sense how do we get the best of the two worlds you know and given that you've co-founded uh, india development review you've previously co-founded net crisis and are no known to lead functions across strategy and um, other operations in startup environments with corporates and social enterprises i think uh, with your experience um, you'd be really good at telling us about uh, how to find that happy spot between doing good and making a profit you know and how that space has evolved so um, i you know give it over to you i'd love to see um you know what all of you have to say on the subject thanks thanks pooja uh, but i think i'm going to kind of have uh, you know anuja madhukar and uh, uh, madan speak to it just because uh, we'll get three different perspectives one as someone who's you know anuja who's been like an investor and advisor to like social entrepreneurs madan who's been like a i don't know serial entrepreneur simultaneous entrepreneur i don't know what the word is uh, for him uh and madhukar uh, professor madhukar who's actually studied social enterprises you know extensively uh so i'm going to keep my introductory remarks really short but for the audience i thought it might be useful uh, just to give them a sense of what we mean by social uh, you know entrepreneurship uh, i think in the earlier session you kind of heard about from entrepreneurs who are more mainstream right the people who kind of get covered by the economic times the you know the business newspapers and all um the world of social entrepreneurship while growing is still not doesn't get the kind of attention that we think it should especially in a world that is now you know kind of plagued by issues around climate change uh you know more and more people uh, more inequality you know between the top 1% and the larger uh, population uh, so there's a greater need for conversations for more attention to be paid to the sector uh, and i think we, the three panelists will kind of speak to different aspects uh but for people who don't know what social entrepreneurship is uh it's in a sense um uh like a marriage of characteristics between like the social sector which most of us think of as ngos charitable organizations you know philanthropy uh and in, in to some extent you know like just do gooders right and the world of business where people think oh they're efficient you know they're for profit they're all about scale uh, but also maybe cutthroat right uh so in a sense social enterprises and the world of social uh, enterprise uh, in my head marries characteristics of those two uh, and i think we'll have the panelists speak to uh, whether it's really the best of both worlds you know what works what doesn't i'll also use this opportunity to kind of just introduce the panelists a little bit um, so we have anuja who has over 20 years of experience uh, on both the funding and the operational side of social impact uh she her expertise lies in building effective philanthropies and scalable social enterprises right from early stage all the way to pre ipo we have madan who like i said you know um, has his finger in many pies he's the founder and ceo of one bridge uh which serves to nurture rural entrepreneurs across the country he's the co-founder of something called game which is the global alliance for mass entrepreneurship and that's a network that tries to get business civil society and government together uh, to kind of catalyze job creation uh he's also the managing trustee of hedel high services uh and he's been the co-founder of merit track uh professor madhukar shukla is the author of a um, really well read book in our sector it's called the social entrepreneurship in india uh quarter idealism and a pound of pragmatism uh he's looked at more than 120 change makers and kind of tried to understand what what their approach is you know what some of their uh, you know think thinking and philosophy is as they try to solve some of india's problems uh he's also the professor for uh, organizational behavior and strategic management at xlr um so with that i'm going to just jump to each one of you all um and the first question for all three of you all is um, because you all have seen it from different angles right uh, you know as someone studying it as an investor you know as an entrepreneur as a practitioner what does social entrepreneurship mean to you know all of you um so anuja would you like to go first sure sure uh thanks everyone for making the time uh i joked with smarnita i said we better run our session on time because it's time to trick or treat for halloween for anyone else on the phone so um i'll get right to it uh for me i think first off they are not two separate worlds in fact i think that delineation is actually rate limiting you know for everyone for entrepreneurs for funders uh and for the ecosystem for me i think 
just some context for what I think of as social entrepreneurship, I think there's two, Smarita, you use this language of characteristics. There's two characteristics. There's a intentionality to improve the life of your customers or consumers, and there's an intentionality towards revenue generation. But as I said, I don't see these two things as different. Uh, sure, there was a time 20 years ago when this work was really starting uh, and had a lot of momentum. And I think the nomenclature of something new was important uh, to sort of elevate the work that was being done. But I think today that is old news, uh, that it is now mainstreamed. And I think instead I would suggest that all entrepreneurship is social and all investment has impact. You know, let's take an example. If we look at, say, um, an Uber or an Ola, right, they arguably in the last five years have had the most interesting uh, impact, right? They've increased uh, the market size of drivers. Drivers have become micro entrepreneurs. They now have the control in their hands of how they dial up their effort, uh, the revenue they generate, and that's incredibly exciting. And I think behind them, there's household names and new organizations that are doing very similar things, that are thinking about the journey of entrepreneurship and uh, intentionally are providing a tremendous amount of impact. So for me, uh, they're not different. All entrepreneurship is social, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Thanks, Anuja. I think this point about intentionality is, uh, you know, is a very important point, right? When you set up a business, when you, you know, exactly. think of scaling it, what what is the motivation beyond, you know, behind doing that? Uh, Madan, do you want to kind of speak a little bit more, expand, you know, your own definition? Sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Smarita, and thanks to uh, BBLF for having me here. Uh, delight to be amongst friends. Uh, I couldn't agree with Anuja more. So when I moved out of Manipal after having sold Meritrack to Manipal Education and worked there for several years, and I started looking at rural education and rural youth transformation, a lot of my friends asked me, so what's different? You know, how, do, how does life look on the other side? And I struggled to find an answer to this question for almost like a year or so, because I didn't find anything very different. Uh, so that's when I kind of decided, uh, so maybe we're framing it wrong. Maybe the world is not divided into enterprises and social enterprises. Maybe the world is divided into social enterprises and anti-social enterprises, right? That by definition, every enterprise has to be a social enterprise that you need to create the balance of not just taking care of your investors and shareholders, but you also need to take care of employees and their families. You need to take care of the larger ecosystem of your customers and their families. And you need to figure out how do you not harm the environment while you're doing this work. And eventually we operate in the society uh, with all its political, social, economic pulls and pressures. And we need to maybe make a contribution there. Right. So it is all these five dimensions that coexist. And I think I would I would rather look at it as 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 as, as Anuja rightly said, intentionality. I would look at a social entrepreneur as somebody who is acutely aware of each of these dimensions and the interplay between these dimensions when taking any decisions and two, to resolve any dilemmas that emerge uh, because of the interplay between these dimensions, you fall back on your purpose or swadharma that you would look back and say, this is what my core purpose is and I will do all the right things that will help me uphold my dharma or, or live uh, the purpose. And, and if that intentionality exists, I would call everybody a social entrepreneur. Yeah, uh, I think, and that's interesting, right? Because uh, like you said, what is to kind of separate, and I'm just taking the Uber from like a social enterprise. It's right. Like, are you putting uh, like the driver's, you know, incomes and all first, exactly. even as you scale the business versus exactly. saying, okay, we want to scale the business. More problem. You know, yes, it, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I think the, the conversations in the boardroom are the ones that you have with your team and investors is what really defines uh, uh, this difference, right? Uh, and that's a critical uh, choice to make. Yeah. Uh, so th thanks, Madan. Uh, Professor Madhukar, you've actually looked at 120, you know, odd social entrepreneurs. You know, you've been 
looking at the sector extensively um do you, i mean do you have like a different definition do you, you know, agree is it an extension of this uh, i won't say i have a different definition i have a wider definition okay. uh, but i agree with anuja and madan that uh, i mean essentially social entrepreneurs are also entrepreneurs and you know just like any entrepreneur uh does uh, they identify uh identify a gap a need an un unserved market and they devise a innovative solution innovation is a very key part of it of any entrepreneurship so they devise an innovation innovative solution and they implement it with a very sustainable model so which is which any entrepreneur does where i see a difference uh, between social and uh, uh, commercial entrepreneurs or uh, is what anuja said the intentionality or uh, uh, what madan said is the purpose so the difference lies in that uh, and the market which they serve so the, the difference lies that uh, you know entrepreneur social entrepreneurs by intention devise entrepreneurial strategies to so solve social problems and that's the purpose now in the process they may also i mean the commercial entrepreneur may also end up solving problem but that may not be the purpose so, so it's it's more about the intentionality which is there the second as we say that any entrepreneur creates wealth so whether it's you know a commercial entrepreneur or whether it's a social entrepreneur the difference lies in that uh if i can put it you know for example a, a commercial entrepreneur creates wealth and the wealth is for the promoter for the enterprise for the investor etc where is the social entrepreneur they create wealth one more than financial it may be social wealth it may be environmental wealth and which is for the communities which they serve so their their uh, uh, obligation is to the communities with with they serve as compared to commercial entrepreneur their obligation is to the investors or to themselves perhaps so that's why i say ki i'm i'm not it's not a different definition it's a wider yeah, definition yeah yeah no and i think it's a great way to think about it right it's purpose and int intentionality yeah. and you know yeah. what it does to the whole ecosystem versus yeah. just like okay, the promoters and, all that yeah and if i can just add one thing smita that yeah. you know the difference comes out when you come at the fork of fork of the road hmm. you know where where the entrepreneur has to make a choice between a social between social impact and the profits or surpluses so ah. the the purpose or intentionality will help him or her to take that decision right and in the, in the work i mean as you were studying organizations and social entrepreneurs did you come across instances where uh, you know some of the entrepreneurs and the founders had to make these decisions do you have like any anecdotes to where like a road they took or didn't take where they took these kind of decisions yes yes oh yeah <laughs> many of them actually <laughs> okay. Okay. so many of them actually uh took a decision that they will take a cut i mean i'm maybe later on if we have time uh, i'll have a even wider definition of social entrepreneurship because because most of the time when we talk about social entrepreneurs we are talking about social inter enterprise so those are for for profit but i'm saying that we can be different kind of social in fact that's a classical definition if you look at the ashoka fellows most of them are not not for profit and that was the um, uh, but many of them took did take a cut the the uh, very clearly decided that i won't name them, but but a social entrepreneur which was in the which was work who was working in the field of rural health affordable rural health uh they am i visible on the screen i am not visible to myself <laughs> okay i think we just disappeared for a bit yeah anyway if you can hear yeah. my um if you yeah, refresh you. you'll be able to come back so just Sorry. try refreshing just try refreshing your window generally it works this happens uh, it can happen sometimes on these virtual meets but uh, mm -hmm. once you refresh you should be able to be back so how do i refresh sorry um okay i any anyway, as long as you can hear me that's fine yeah yeah we can we can yeah okay okay right. yeah yeah so so i mean there are two options one is i mean obviously the the enterprise has to be sustainable and therefore uh, you have to have revenues coming in uh, now the choice is whether you are uh, whether the uh, entrepreneur had to you know look at those kind of illnesses which which may be few but which give good returns 
or to look at some of those, you know, for, for example, waterborne diseases, which are very, you know, uh, very low cost uh, solutions. But 80% of the disease in the rural areas are caused by the waterborne disease. So Anthropon took a decision, that's the intentionality, that if I have to serve the rural population, which will help them to increase, you know, increase their work days, increase their health, uh, I'll, I'll go, go into that market and not look at the other one. So there are there are many, many such instances, you know, where, okay. where they, they select ro low remunerative markets, but which have a larger impact, social impact. <coughs> Anuja, uh, if we can just come back to you, you've actually been an investor as well as an advisor, right, uh, to social ent enterprises. And uh, like you said up front, uh, you know, all entrepreneurs, I mean, we are making the distinction between social entrepreneurs and, you know, normal entrepreneurs, not, sorry, normal, uh, you know, like the larger set of universal <laughs> entrepreneurs. <laughs> Uh, but are there differences that you've seen in either the approach, I mean, other than intentionality and purpose, um, whether it's in terms of like uh, like a funding ecosystem or, uh, you know, uh, like the kind of uh, things that they have to build in the value chain in addition to like building their own business. Are there things that you've seen that have been peculiar to the world of social uh, entre uh, enterprises? Uh, and maybe Madan, after that, you could speak because you've been an entrepreneur on this side and like, you know, have the challenges been different you know, this, uh, uh, you know, when you've done, you know, head held high and one bridge versus Meritrack. Uh, but Anuja, yeah, uh, have yeah. the challenges been different? You know, I'd say, first off, there's more that is similar, in, uh, particularly in the last uh, five, seven years than there is that's different, right? 20 years, 10 years ago, you were as a, let's just continue to use the terminology of social entrepreneur, you were doing a tremendous amount of education, right? Because the, the, the ecosystem was being built. You were telling, uh, you were going to folk, folks, say the Rockefeller or the Carnegie Foundations or family offices of the world and educating them on how you can still have social impact and have commercial return. And at the same time, you were going to mainstream venture capitalists and talking about how that money will still get you return. Today, uh, I'd say social entrepreneurs are not doing as much of that. You're not needing to educate funders, board members, um, potential partners, you know, and there's probably examples in every industry. Everyone, particularly in Bangalore, will know Baiju's, right? So Baiju's received a $50 million philanthropic check from Chan Zuckerberg from the philanthropy, uh, from their philanthropy, but they co-invested with Lightspeed. Uh, and that was their first commercial money. So the first commercial money was both philanthropic at a big ticket size, was philanthropic and mainstream. You can find that example at, for anyone who's an early stage company here. Uh, you know, we now have ecosystem partners like uh, a Y Combinator. So we've had social enterprises out of, um, in education employability, say Vahan, that was part of Y Combinator's first class. We have education early stage startups like Blackboard Radio that went through Lightspeed's entrepreneurship class and now have both money from Sequoia, but also a social entrepreneurial uh, funder like an Omidyar. So I'd say uh, largely uh, less than we did before, but there is still some education that's going on because you need to <coughs> say, Madan talked about the boardroom. You may still have the conversations that you have when say you have um, a, com a purely commercial funder like a Lightspeed along with a philanthropic but very sophisticated experienced funder like a Chan Zuckerberg, that conversation, uh, that back and forth, I think is a little bit more deliberate. Um, and nuanced, I think, within the talent that you hire. So when you talked about, um, you know, and there will be people in the audience who perhaps are thinking about um, making the transition into this world, uh, or maybe did, and um, their experience uh, has been varied. I think second, uh, for sure, the conversations you have um, on hiring and talent, right? Because as you pointed out, Smaranita, the talent we have that world can be everything from, say we look at something, um, Madhukar talked about water, 
we might have a social activist who talks about water rights. We have might have a commercial, uh, somebody who's worked in water, a pioneer or something for a long time. How do you get that talent to work together even in your organization? So I think um, maybe if I was to make one point, just the perhaps lots more talking because <laughs> lots, more time spent making sure we're all on the same page because there's just a we have a wider net uh i leave it i'll let mother mother add yeah yeah mother i'm sure you've been in that boardroom where you've had like seriously commercial investors as well as yeah. you know, philanthropic investors and you know i don't envy your position trying to kind of uh you know get all of them to kind of see it from each other's point of view but yeah uh, could you speak to a little bit of this well? sure absolutely and uh, anuja i think i'll i'll follow some several of the points that you made uh, and build on that one uh, one difference uh, or some of the learnings uh, smarinita uh, over the last 7 8 years and this is not just speaking about social entrepreneurship but entrepreneurship in general or entrepreneurs in general is that i don't think we as entrepreneurs are spending enough time on the inner journey we are only hankering a lot about the external journey and why i say that is that if we can truly discover a purpose to be the core of who we are then automatically the journey pans out uh, anchored on the purpose you know many of the conversations is so much about how do you find your customers how do you find your uh, you know investors how do you grow the business which are all good but very little conversations are happening on how do you find yourself right and the last 7 8 years i've spent a lot of time uh trying to find that out and i'm still saying trying to because it's never an end state it's always a journey right and i love the next uh panel that's coming up the inner journey becoming you and i think that's critical because the moment you find your passion and your purpose uh the program which is the startup or the enterprise or the ngo becomes a vehicle for you to achieve your purpose which is the second difference i'm saying that a lot of people i meet uh, some of them say oh i used to be an entrepreneur now i'm working in a corporate right and i keep saying that listen if you're a social entrepreneur you never used to be a social entrepreneur you always are now you might decide that you as a social entrepreneur is using the corporate to fulfill a part of your journey that is absolutely fine so i would say being an entrepreneur and more so being a social entrepreneur is a way of life rather than a thing you do hmm. right so if i want to solve the problem of youth unemployment and solve the problem of rural youth and solve the problem of youth as change makers i will pursue it come what may right and i might pursue it using multiple paths hmm. right so the five p's i talk about passion purpose uh, program which is the which is the entity that you designed to take forward your purpose and then the path and progress comes into play but a lot of conversations all about the progress and we forget the path and the and the purpose right that's the second uh, reflection uh, third is that it is insanely hard uh, to build a business model around solving a social problem it takes a lot of time right uh, as i say the classic definition of a startup is that a startup is an entity where you don't know who your customers are and what problem are you trying to solve for them and who's going to pay for that problem to be solved and how will you make up make money doing the problem uh, solving the problem right uh it's easy to do i'm saying relatively easy to do food delivery in koramangala but if you want to figure out how do i deliver vaccines to 5000 villages uh, uh you know and still make money in that process uh the business model will take a long time to bake even after four years of one bridge trying to construct a business model i was just uh, you know uh, i was cleaning up my dropbox folder because i'd run out of space and i realized that i must have worked on some 72 versions of a financial uh, plan right and and all the way dating back to 2014 and I, it's still work in progress so it requires an enormous amounts of patience it's not you know uh, contrast that not that it it it, it sounded any easy but we wrote the merit track business plan sitting in an office seven days flat and 90% of the business plan still held true uh, 10 years later right so that is the third and the and, and the other learning has been that the c word in the in obviously the the corporate side or the commercial side is competition and uh, the beauty of being a social entrepreneur is that i don't think i've used the word competition uh, you know i can't remember the last time i used the word competition in a conversation uh, apart from just trying to say what competition is so 
it is all about collaboration and how do you create collaborative uh, networks because you are if you want to live to your purpose uh, you have to create and and you're solving larger problems at scale you have to think collaboration all the time and not think competition right uh, and from an investor uh, standpoint i think to anuja's point i think uh, there's a lot of i wouldn't call it education but if the investors can also find their purpose and say why are you making an investment of course you need your 30% IRR or whatever that is but apart from that what social impact do you care so many many board meeting many conversations i start off conversation saying let us talk, not talk about the business model let's talk about what you deeply care about and let's see if we resonate there because if if what i care about and what you care about are the same things we'll find a way of working this out but if you care about only generating 30x returns on your money uh, then it's a different conversation right so i think a lot of us need to get on to the dinner journey where we can surely and slowly start defining a unicorn not just a billion dollar valuation but can we deliver a billion smiles and of course be profitable in that uh, process right so i'll end here the lots of uh, nuances to these thoughts we can pick up later yeah sure sure and uh, uh, professor madhukar that's so one of the things you know i wanted to uh, expand on is some of the things that uh, you know madhan has spoken about right uh, a passion purpose in a journey you know as you were speaking to some of the entrepreneurs you must have seen uh, a lot of this right but it's very hard to sustain that you know when you're surrounded by like all the challenges that you are surrounded by right like a broken ecosystem you know investors who may not be able to kind of you know come at it from the same point of view um what were some of the things you saw entrepreneurs do to kind of keep that fire burning in a sense right because it it beats you down right i mean it's not an easy ecosystem on multiple fronts uh, um, so what yeah. what keeps what is kept people? before before professor answer that question i thought i heard you are saying man it's a broken ecosystem rather than an ecosystem it's <laughs> <is> also true <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think both work <laughs> yes yeah so i think first thing i would say i i very much agree with what madan said you know about the inner purpose in fact when uh, i saw the you know the title the best of the two words the first interpretation which came to my mind was uh, that social entrepreneurs actually live in two words one is the inner word but the other is the outer word so you know when when they are when they are uh, focusing or when they are attempting to solve a problem it's not a problem just outside it's something it's something which they are passionate about it's something which uh, which actually bothers them you know they, they they are troubled by you know those problems existing somewhere out there so the way i mean you know, the way i, I mean, what madan also said uh, and i interpreted that in solving the outer problem they are also solving inner problem and that's the best of the two words you know that you are doing something you are passionate about troubled about you are able to solve it over there so uh, that's that's the way i would look at it Yeah. No, and I think that's a very interesting uh, thing to bring in, right? I mean, I never thought of it that way. That uh, you know, there is the straddling of the social and the business, you know, uh, sides as well as the inner and the outer uh, side as well. Um, maybe uh, so, so that is, that is why what you know when Madan said that uh, you identify who are your uh, investors, who are your grant makers or funders or other stakeholders. Uh, that becomes important because one is trying to create that ecosystem where one can solve those problems yeah. and, and i think some know, of this yeah sorry i see some of this in your students that you kind of think this this inner drive to kind of go beyond like the you know the traditional jobs which, you know companies that come to campus are you seeing it at uh yes and no <laughs> let me let me be very frank about it uh at least a younger generation and i have been with xlri for last 30 years and i had worked earlier also uh, i th- i think the young generation is much more sensitive and much more informed about the social issues and definitely they are much smarter and much more resourceful at least what we were at their age so there is you know so there, there is a potential which is there now at least uh, you know institutes like xlri or iims and you know other premier institutes uh, but they didn't jo- i mean that was not the aspiration they had when they joined but many of them i mean and uh, then there is of course the the emi on the 
the education loan which they take and you know that's the golden handcuff but i've seen many of them actually who come back uh, and many many of i mean they may not they may not become social entrepreneurs but they would join an organization which is working with you know maybe maybe an incubator maybe a, a, a you know advisory where they can utilize those skills so they so they take time and they are smarter ones i'll, I'll give you one example uh one of uh, you know the, and this guy came back to the sector he's now working with the uh, in the education sector uh, in the urban areas uh he took one of the worst jobs i mean worst i'm saying in terms of the company and the ethics of that and and i told him i called him i said why are you taking this job because i mean you just not fit in i know you you know and he says sir uh they are giving me the highest salary and i have calculated that if i you know in one and a half years i'll be able to pay back my loan and by and i can put in my papers and then uh, uh, at the end of the two years i am free and then i can come back and he actually did that so there are you know there are also those kind of people very rare but uh, they are there so well, thank you and i think uh, what you're talking about and what anuja spoke about earlier this whole thing about talent right uh, talent in you know in social uh, enterprises you know as we understand it uh, it it is a big challenge you have a lot of people wanting to join startups uh, on in the commercial side but there's a little more reluctance is it just about the money is it just because like the it pays uh, lesser than the others or are there you know are there other factors as you know in all three of them right you all would have seen talent in out uh, different kinds of people what is it, what is it that's like a barrier uh smarenta just yeah. one second um i just want you to uh, alert you to the fact that you know like uh, benedict and some other people they wanted to ask some questions so if you sure. feel like picking any of them you can also pick from those yeah, yeah. i wasn't sure so there I'm are so more caught up in this conversation no, absolutely it's been wonderful that's how it should be right i'm just uh, yeah so yeah so uh, Okay, actually, why don't we just go to this? What is the best way to get impact funding? Um, people want suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have mother and Anuja from. We can get that answer from both sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can give it a try, but maybe if since it is an audience question, if the person could be more specific, and then you know, the three of us and maybe other people in attendance can try and. Um, you know be more helpful than just giving general gyan so yeah. does he, uh, if yeah. you want to move to another one but if the person who asked the question just wants to be a little bit more specific even if it's the industry they're in the ticket size they're looking at um and a bit of it that be helpful i don't know that's me but more than the others so should we wait should we wait for uh, more clarification i can go there are a couple of other questions sure uh professor shukla this one's for you it says a few social entrepreneurs i've met are shy to say they're here for for profit yeah. by solving a problem with a higher purpose uh you know how like what would you what's the advice you give them uh yeah i think in some ways uh, that reluctance is there uh, the reluctance is also because you know the moment you say for profit uh we are automatically associated with profit maximization exactly so they have to remain profitable they have to create surplus wow. so that the enterprise remains sustainable and personally if you ask me i i find uh, you know this for profit not for profit uh, rather peculiar terms because if there is something for, not for profit there should also be something not for people and planet so i mean defining things you know by negation uh, I, i don't think that makes sense at least to me but uh, uh, perhaps the reluctance comes from there you know reluctance comes that, that if i say i am for profit automatically it makes me the you know that i am not looking at the social issues right. so that, that's where the reluctance comes Madan, you. I think you have something to say as well. Uh, I think he would have a better. No, I, I completely agree with uh, with uh, Prof uh, Shukla in the sense that see the challenge is to find the intersection of feeling good, doing good, and making good money. Right. A lot of us, uh, you know, do the checkbook philanthropy where we write a check out and we feel good. A lot of us struggle hard uh, trying to do good, but without worrying about where finances and everything come from, and we are struggling to kind of make it sustainable and 
a lot of us who are making good money how do you bring it at the intersection and to create a business model there uh, is a challenge i don't think you are I, i completely agree it's it's about profiteering than profits itself yeah right uh, profits are a must and and has to be there because uh, b- and and if you add the boardroom and your own inner and outer journeys you'll be able to balance out what will i give up to earn an additional cent of profit versus what will i hold dear that will not make me go after the additional dollar of profit i think if that balance is there uh, profit is the lifeline right so to all the entrepreneurs out there out there i think which also links me to the impact funding question saying that unfortunately i think sometimes i think we are all chasing the wrong business models in the sense that uh, if we are doing something really meaningful and uh, impactful uh, and we are able to show a sustainable uh, model out there i think there's enough money that's out there right so of course there is a lot of uh, uh, questions around you know do impact investors are there enough of them do they understand all that is there but i'm saying in any model if we are able to find that this in you are able to show me this path towards impact and profitability and how you will be sustainable uh, i don't think there's a dearth the of money so i would i would reflect and look at internally if i have not been able to raise money which is the question i keep asking myself what am i doing wrong and how do i uh, think through this process rather than saying oh the investors are not ready to put in any money yeah and i think the follow up question in a sense by uh, you know sarit nair is how do we bring in commercial entrepreneurs and companies to work on a higher purpose and i think you kind of spoke a bit about this you know both of you all right the, like how do you kind of get uh, more commercial entrepreneurs exactly. to kind of think about purpose right? but but the point uh, you all both made is this thing about emphasis on profit is really important because even when you look at the non profit world right the ngo sector there is a greater push now to kind of get them to be exactly. sustainable and the only way to be sustainable is to generate your own revenues and not be dependent right so exactly. i think it's time that profit is like not looked upon as a bad word i think yeah. it's important that we start figuring out how do we make money enough to sustain ourselves versus having to kind of you know exactly get, uh, exactly philanthropic funding so uh, just can can i interject here sure Thank sure you. yeah, yeah. uh i think this uh, equation of making profit and being sustainable is slightly flawed mm. uh in the sense that i mean yes you have to have surplus mm. now how you create that surplus would depend on the quote and quote business model you have mm. we have social entrepreneurial ventures which have survived for 30 40 50 years on grants mm right so they, they i mean just like you have a you know you have a investment strategy how Correct. do you get investment you also have i mean those are uh, those are ventures which have a fundraising strategy right. how do you raise funds and they do it professionally and they do it, i mean look at cry for example so yeah. they have a model exactly. look at boomsh look at uh, uh, barefoot college look at seva i mean these are all not for profit sometimes equated with ngos but they have created innovation they are solving social problems and they have a they have a strategy for remaining you know maintaining uh, having surplus and and continue growing and one of the problems with the, you know grants also is that sometimes it comes with the conditions of the donor and grant maker uh, but but these are organizations which have remained autonomous and uh, you know in the decisions which they make the second part which i would also like to you know the second aspect i would like to point out is that you know if you ask any investor whether impact or commercial how many of their investments succeed because they do a due diligence uh, and i have checked with my investor friends in the uh, impact community they say five of our investment completely fail which is after the and these are for profit ventures two three just give them just the you know the return which they have invested there would be one or two which are the stars so essentially what i mean while they are for profit ventures or for profit plans but chances of success is nearly the 20 25 30% so sustainability and uh, you know being profitable is that equation i think we need to relook Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think we have a couple of questions, but I also know we've like 
I think we're running out of time. I just yeah, did want to ask. Went off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there time for a last question? I just because it's a lit fest, uh, you know, session. I wanted them to sure, sure. Like a couple of like, books. Just a concluding. Would, uh, yeah. So each one, right? Just two books that you would recommend to audiences wanting to learn more about the space, uh, and uh, you know, or like, yeah, just kind of getting uh, smarter. And professor, yours, your book would definitely be one of them. But if I could have the other two, speakers, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I want to use this. This is a marketing <laughs> strategy. <laughs> uh, I think one book, uh, especially for those who are interested and may not be, you know, may not interested to know about the sector is. Uh, Bornstein's book, uh, David Bornstein's book, uh, How to Change the World, The Power of New Ideas. I mean, th this was perhaps the first book which was, uh, you know, meant for quote unquote lay public. A uh, lot of examples and built with certain theory building. So it gives, it gives a good insight about uh, and many in Indian examples apart from, many, apart from others. Uh, for social entrepreneurs, I would say uh, there's a World Bank publication which came, I think, about two, three years back, reaching the last mile. Uh, it has, uh, and it, it gives models. It's, I think the subtitle is uh, uh, Business Models for Inclusive Development or something like that. And it's available online. I mean, you can one can download it. It uh, has about 30, 40 case studies and based on in you know, different areas like healthcare, education, energy, waste, etc. And uh, based on that, they have identified what are the models. So especially for practicing, you know, young practicing entrepreneurs, that would be a uh, uh, good and uh, Thank you. Anuja? Yeah, uh, Smarnita had teed up this question. So I brought <laughs> my books with me. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I have not written any of them. <laughs> uh, so I had, um, I had one, my, I have three books is that, uh, for funders, I think, uh, Give Smart uh, by Tom Tierney. So I think all three of mine are not, um, they may be books that you know of, they may even be, be on your bookshelf, but I think given today's talk, I encourage everyone to turn to these. Uh, and the reason I like uh, Give Smart a lot is it really, it has a lot of prompts about how you align your values, which Madan and Madhukar have talked about a lot. How do you align your values with your funding, um, with what's needed in the market? Uh, and again, there's lots of examples uh, of funders, both philanthropic um, and folks that are looking for return. Uh, so that's, and they're, they're, these are all short reads. Uh, for social entrepreneurs, I think the best book uh, on entrepreneurship for social entrepreneurs as well is The Hard Thing About Hard to Do by Ben Horowitz, which many people will know as the founder of Andreessen Horowitz, but he was also, um, he talks a lot about his own story as the founder of LoudCloud and trying to raise money as the market was crashing, uh, which can sometimes feel like the everyday world of a social entrepreneur. Uh, and the last, and I think closer to home, and it really underscores some of what we're speaking about today, is a lovely little um, compilation of conversations, Uncommon Ground by Rohini Nilakani. Uh, and I think the, what it really underscores is that business and social activism, she, is, she often uses the language of bazaar and samaj, have much more in common than they have different. Uh, and it is three, it is at least eight different um, kind of issues that we talk about, water, education, and more. So those are my three. I really wanted a good biography. So I'm really hoping, uh, and it was hard for me to come up with one. So if either Professor Shukla needs a new book idea, and I'm hoping, this is my challenge to Madan, please make your recommendation a biography. Uh, I'm starting with that. <laughs> 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 no, I've been very, very inspired by uh, this book, uh, which is I Too Had a Dream uh, by Vargis Kurian. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, to look at where Amul started from and what it achieved and to hear it in uh, in uh, uh, Kurian's own words is uh, brilliant. Uh, but I would also, uh, uh, I spent a lot of time the last few years uh, 
delving into the Gita. There are many variants, many versions are there, but I think, you know, not from a religious or a spiritual standpoint, but I think the Bhagavad Gita has phenomenal lessons for entrepreneurs. And uh, I would uh, urge you to look at a very, uh, many variants of the book. Uh, the last book that, uh, in many books, but the one other thing that really inspired me, which is not about social entrepreneurship, but dreaming crazy and dreaming big and making it happen, was this recent book that I read called The Space Parents uh, by Christian Devonport on the Musk and, uh, and Jeff Bezos story on to colonize Mars. And you look at the scale of thinking and the scale of ambition. Of course, they're billionaire boys uh, funded with a lot of money, but still to kind of dream at that level and to kind of figure out how to make things happen is I think what we should take a leaf out of uh, from at least thinking at that uh, level of ambition. I, I, we could go on and on, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. No, thank you so much. I mean, these are some of the books I haven't read as well. So they're now all on my reading list as well. Uh, yeah. And with that, we'll close because I know we've really exceeded time. So Sandeep, thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you so much.